In this video, I'm gonna show you how to recreate your favorite in-game objects from Fallout using Fusion 360 and how I use these techniques to 3D print this massive Repcon rocket. Let's get started. Welcome back to Maker's Muse, guys. So here I have the A3 Repcon rocket from Fallout New Vegas. So Fallout New Vegas, in my opinion, was the best Fallout game of the franchise. Um, and it had a lot of quirky characters. So Jason Bright, you come across him at the Repcon test facility, and they are trying to get to create their great journey in these A3 Repcon rockets. And basically, a bit of backstory, I just got the Raze N2 Plus, which is a huge 3D printer, and I wanted to 3D print something large that wouldn't take up too much plastic or take too long. As you would know, 3D printing very large objects can take upwards of 50 or 60 hours, but I didn't want to spend that long. So I wanted to print something like a rocket, but I had a look around and I couldn't really see anything on Thingiverse or My Mini Factory that I really wanted to print that would be unique. So I set about trying to recreate this Repcon rocket. And essentially what I wanted to do in this video is share with you guys my technique for getting in-game files, pulling them out of Fallout, or uh, it also should work with Skyrim as well, and then recreating them using Fusion 360 and 3D printing them. So let's get into it. First things first, you will need NIFScope. So NIFScope is a fantastic tool for pulling out meshes from Fallout. It'll work on Fallout 4, 3, New Vegas, and it should work on Skyrim as well. And you can get the latest version in the video description. You'll also need the latest version of Mesh Mixer, and you'll need Fusion 360, or some other 3D modeling tool that lets you bring in a mesh to work off. So basically, with this video, I've done videos on pulling meshes for the printing before, but we're actually gonna be using the mesh in this instance to influence the design, because you'll notice with this rocket, it's nice and smooth. Well, still got a bit of facets, but uh, the game, the in-game file for this rocket is actually really faceted and not very useful for 3D printing. So what I've done in this case is I've used the actual in-game mesh like a 3D picture to influence my design of the final object in Fusion 360. So if I write NIFScope, and what you'll want to do is you want to browse an archive. So go find the .bsa file in the game folder for whatever uh, version of Fallout or Skyrim that you're using and find the meshes folder. Now you can search through this, find whatever you want in game and then you export it as an OBJ. Simple as that. Grab some ones that you're interested in and then close NIFScope. So fire up Mesh Mixer next and then what you want to do in Mesh Mixer is what we're going to use it for is to basically scale and orient this mesh before we dump it into Fusion 360. So pull in the OBJ and essentially what you want to do is use the transform tool to locate, orient, and scale your mesh accordingly. You can do this in Fusion, but I find Mesh Mixer is designed for it, so it's a lot easier to do within Mesh Mixer. So I did that with a rocket, and because I was planning to print it large, I scaled it to quite a large scale, and then uh, save that as an STL or OBJ, whatever you like, uh, STL probably is best, and then dump it out. Now it's worth mentioning that at this stage, as you can probably tell in Mesh Mixer, this mesh is not very 3D printable. Do not try to print this mesh at this stage if you were gonna do it. Go watch my other video on how to repair it if you do wanna print the in-game mesh. But as I said, we're only using it to influence our design at this stage. Now onto the fun part. You wanna fire up Fusion 360 and you want to go to add in a new mesh. So Fusion 360 has some quite powerful mesh editing tools now. And basically we're just gonna grab this mesh and drop it in. But before we do that, make sure in your preferences that you've set the Z or Z axis to vertical, so up. Usually by default in 3D software, the Y axis will be vertical, but for 3D printing, we want the Z axis to be vertical. So if you want the things to come in actually where you think they are, should be not like at an angle, like 90 degrees from what you think, make sure that's set to Z. So change that and then bring in your mesh and scale it if you have, if you need to do any final tweaks. Usually it's good to get it aligned on your origin if possible. Don't get it, don't worry too much about getting it perfect or not, but this is pretty good for me. Now we have two options. One, you can now convert this mesh into a B-Rep to actually digitally and physically model onto it, or you can leave it as is and use it as an influence for your 3D design, which is what, that's, that's what I did here. I didn't convert my mesh into something I could directly edit. I just used it as sort of a 3D picture to influence my rocket design. Now designing this rocket, is actually quite straightforward. And it has a few features. The first main feature is a revolve, which is the main rocket shape. Then it has the fins, which come out the side. And it has a few kind of fancy things where I've done a, uh, 
a extrude which is offset from the face of the revolver which gives that that nice little edge there. Basically just using the original in-game mesh as influence on my design intent. And then I did the little, uh, little spheres here which are just revolves again for the little bubbles. And um, I was pretty much happy with that and the little details here. Now you could go further than this. You can actually drop pictures into Fusion 360. So my buddy Garrett over at Chaos Cortex does a lot of really hardcore Fusion 360 modeling of characters and that sort of thing. And he will drop reference images in to use those to model off. But for this, I just wanted to print something large and impressive. So I was pretty happy at this stage with my rocket. So I exported that out and went into the Idea Maker software for the Ray's 3D printer. And basically the Ray's 3D printer has two nozzles by stock. It's got two 0.4 millimeter nozzles. And I originally printed this with a few perimeters, but hollow. I couldn't do vase mode because of the fins, unfortunately. And it failed pretty, pretty badly. Just as it got to the top of the fins, it knocked them over and it was a disaster. So I went back to the drawing board and I decided to remove one of the nozzles and it worked pretty well, uh, but yeah, just have a look at the time lapse. It is the latter half of the 20th century. 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 And man has sent rockets into deep space. He has placed satellites into orbit. Man has sent rockets into deep space. Man has sent rockets into deep space. Man has sent rockets into deep space. And he has actually walked in space. So the filament I'm printing in is Make Shaper PLA and it's a fantastic grey. It's just standard PLA but it prints really well. It has a nice sort of matte finish on it after I'm printing on the Ray's uh, N2 Plus. Printing at 0.3 millimeter layer heights. So as you can see, it did still kind of knock one of the fins over, unfortunately. And this is where I would go back to my 3D modeling software and adapt my 3D file to be more printable, where I probably would remove the fins and make them go on afterwards. And I also noticed that there's some weird kind of internal artifacting going on at different angles. I'm not sure if that's the printer or the way the model's set up. But either way, the model did complete and it took around 36 hours to print. And there you have it guys, the A3 Repcon rocket from Fallout New Vegas. Now Jason Bright and his Bright followers can make the great journey in safety unless you decide to convince what's his name that he's not actually a ghoul and blow them all up. Which is something I did sometimes. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this video guys and I'm going to stick this file up on my mini factory if you want to download it. It's pretty basic, I might add to it, but I just wanted to print something large and impressive to test the Raze N2 Plus. And as you can see, it doesn't even fit into frame. Um, it's about 500 millimeters high. I did scale it slightly from the full 600 millimeter build height, just to make sure it didn't cut off the top. I wasn't too sure on that printer, but I'm confident I could do 600 millimeters, no problem. And if you enjoyed this video, guys, on Makers Mutes, and you want to see future 3D printing tips, tricks, reviews, and projects like this, hit the subscribe button. Helps us out a huge amount. And look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Happy printing, guys. Bye. And rockets into deep space. He has placed satellites into orbit. 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 And he has actually.